47 years later, you know, from you starting your company, you finally invested in a technology stock or two, IBM and Intel. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't do the Intel. You uh, didn't do the Intel. No. You did the IBM. Yeah. Who did the Intel? Todd? One of, yeah, it would have been Todd because he was the only one here then. Okay, yeah. Todd did, Todd Combs, who is yeah. uh, one of your new investment managers. It was his idea. Um, but you never bought Microsoft. Did you hear from your board member, Bill Gates, what that I can't happened? buy. I can't buy Microsoft. If, if, if we bought Microsoft, for one thing, our buying takes place month mm -hmm. after month after month. And something had happened that was favorable at Microsoft, people mm -hmm. wouldn't have said I had inside information. On well, it. actually, let's bring in Bill Gates right now, who founded Maybe Microsoft. Maybe you'll give me some inside information. <laughs> <laughs> Now's the time. <laughs> he wants inside information from Microsoft. <laughs> When you heard that he finally bought a technology stock, and IBM and Intel, did you think those were pretty good ideas? Well, I think it's great that Todd gets the entire universe uh, to exercise his, you know, great thinking, and um, and he's, he's done a good job there. A lot of technology companies, you can't see where they're going to be in in ten years or twenty years. Mm -hmm. Uh, IBM's got enough service revenue that they may be somewhat of an exception to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but most tech stocks, you know, play a very high variance game, which makes it, uh, I think, the most indus interesting industry in the world, but not for an investor who wants uh, any degree of, of downside protection. He told me that when I met him in 1991. <laughs> he said, stay uh, away. At one point should be made about Todd. You Todd can change his positions far, far easier than I can. Uh, so uh, Todd is working with sums. If he decides to move on to something else, he can, he can, he can do that in a week or two. Uh, I can't do that with the big positions that we take. Uh, so we're really locked in more than, than he would be. Bill, you just said with many tech stocks, you can't see where they will be in 10 to 20 years. Can you see, Warren, where Facebook would be in 10 to 20 years? No, no, I can't. I mean, it's an enormously impressive accomplishment. I mean, and, and, and my guess is that, it, you know, it has a big future of some sort. But I, I have no idea. Of, uh, you, know, I, you know, I didn't even know what it was six or seven years ago. And I'm still not on it. So. Bill, are you on Facebook? Sure. Yeah, you're on Twitter as he's well. Way, he's, he's in a different world. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Always has been. In fact, I remember when you were saying Bill had to teach you how to just simply click on the blue E for Explorer. He's, he's had his problems with me. Yeah. <laughs> well, Warren's a heavy tech user if you count online bridge. That's right. Uh, yeah, that that's takes right. him up into the, the top 1% yeah. in terms of uh, Internet addicts. I'm like a guy that's learned how to turn on the switch. And then, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> there's some guy inside that thing that's playing the hand for me. Or something. <laughs> um, uh, listen, let's talk about Facebook. It's huge news today, huge. the beginning of the road show. Um, Bill, y you've been dealing with investors and, and analysts for years and banks for years and years. Would you tell Mark Zuckerberg, because there is question as to whether he will attend the roadshow, would you say, you know, you really should get out there and do it? I know when Microsoft had to do its roadshow, I m minimized the amount of time. I think I offered up three days. Mm -hmm. I told them no limousines. I took a book about biology I was reading during the breaks. Um, I tried not to have it you know, take too much time away from the business. Uh, you know, so you, you got to focus on what's important and, and making sure your product for end users is great is, is number one. This is a guy that negotiated down with, with his mother down to an hour over the time he was willing to spend with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know what I was in for. Uh, I, I thought... You didn't want to spend more than an hour with Buffett? Your mom really said, want... meet the guy? And... Before Warren and I met, I wasn't sure we'd have that much to talk about. Now, I was 100% wrong about that, <laughs> but my mom uh, made me say, okay, I'd stay a few hours at this event that Kay Graham and Warren were at. In fact, I stayed the whole day, uh, and I was disappointed when, when Warren was leaving because, you know, talking about business and the dynamics of how things were changing, I, I found somebody who, you know, I'm, I'm part of uh, one of the most interesting part of my life, a, a lifelong conversation. His mother was prying us apart at the end. <laughs> <laughs> would you, what would you advise uh, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook to attend that roadshow? 
I, I wouldn't worry about it too much. I mean, <laughs> and the, you know, <laughs> that, that offering is going to be big. You know, I'm not saying the stock is going to go up, but, I, but it, you know, it's going to get all the attention in the world. And people know what Facebook is. I mean, it's not a mystery that has to be explained, Can it, <laughs> except to me. If it, <laughs> if, if it does have a $100 billion valuation or whatever the crazy numbers are out there, can it sustain that? What does it need to do to sustain that, Bill? Well, it just needs to have advertising revenue that makes that earnings stream uh, properly discounted be greater than $100 billion. <laughs> That's all <laughs> and, and Simple. Yeah, you told yeah. them how to do it and they blow it. It's their fault. <laughs> it's right there in the intelligent investor. Yeah. Uh, you know, they have a lot of traffic. And the ability to monetize that traffic over time, it'll be fascinating to see if they can push up and, and go well beyond uh, the earnings stream you'd need for that or not. But it is one phenomenally uh, impressive company. Bill, everybody's always talking about the succession plan here. And, you know, you went through this very issue back when you decided to leave the CEO position at Microsoft. Uh, the stock has done really well lately, and Windows 8 is about to blast out onto the scene. And I hear from, we cover Silicon Valley heavily at Fox Business, and I hear from them that once Windows 8 gets into the Ultrabooks and it becomes a touch screen, you could very well take on the Mac Air and the MacBook. Is that... What, you're, what Microsoft should be aiming for. And do you think it can happen with Ultrabooks? Well, it's very exciting that Windows 8 is coming out. It's a very big deal for the company. Uh, Steve and the, the whole team are doing a great job there. It creates a new category of machines that are sort of have the good things about tablets and the good things about PCs. And, you know, so it's going to evolve these digital tools. You know, people right now like the tablet, but it's hard to to give input, you don't have Microsoft Office on there. And so with our hardware partners, there's a lot of neat stuff that comes out later this year. Warren, what kind of computer do you use? Uh, I think it's uh, an HP that the guys at the Furniture Mart sent over. And what do you <laughs> use, Bill? <laughs> well, I have a, a Samsung tablet is my primary machine right now, but I have Dell machines and a variety. I'm always getting the latest and greatest. So no iPad for you? No, no, I, I, I'm, I said I'm using the latest right, and greatest. The latest. <laughs> <laughs> Bill has a, they have a chimpanzee up there in Seattle, and then they have me, and then they have us both test these new things. <laughs> and, and, and actually, I'm more reliable than the chimpanzee. <laughs> Do you have an iPad, Warren? No. No. So you're not going for the tablet at this point. Uh, Bill, you know, <laughs> let's, let's just say that the, the Samsung Galaxy has gotten traction, but not nearly as much as the iPad has. The RIM couldn't come out with a tablet that smacked it down, nor HP. What company out there has the, that special something that can take on that iPad, in your opinion? Well, the tablet space is, is going to grow, but you really want um, something where... You either have a pen or a keyboard, and you have your productivity applications. Mm -hmm. uh, so you want the best of, of both worlds, and that's what you know, Microsoft and others are pushing for. I think this fall, people will understand uh, that there's, there's room for big improvement there. Uh, Microsoft just made a pretty big deal, about $300 million with Barnes & Noble. Will eventually that morph into a deal to make some type of tablet or a Kindle that has Microsoft abilities to jack it up? Well, the idea there is that they're going to take their reading experience and their books right. and make them look super good on these new devices. And so on these devices, you want to run office where you create documents, but you want to consume books in new ways, consume video in new ways. And so it's that merger and having their team do innovative work is, is what made that investment a, 